Okay, our next lecture is on the factor market. One of the things you may have noticed or not noticed, if I did it right, was that we actually started our discussion this semester talking about the factor market. Remember when we talked about old McDonald and her wanting to decide what inputs to purchase? Um, that was a factor market discussion. But then we quickly moved over to the product market. Now, what we need to understand is what is the difference between the two of these? And why did I start out in one market, move to the other, and now we have to come back to the first? That's what we're going to talk about for a little while now. Okay, so... All right, we're going to start with the product market. The product market, as you recall, is the market for final goods and services. So when we were looking at things before, trying to decide how much a producer makes of a good, that was the product market. Remember, producers have two roles in the economy, uh, both as a producer and as a consumer. So as a producer, we're looking at the product market. So when we looked at the product market, there were certain things that we needed to look at. We needed to look at the demand curve, all right, which showed the relationship between the price of the output and the quantity of the output. We looked at marginal revenue, which remember when we define marginal revenue, it's a change in revenue divided by the change in output. We looked at marginal cost, the change in cost divided by the change in output. And we knew that profit maximization occurred where the producer produced the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. We then read the price at that quantity off the demand curve. So when we looked at profit maximization, we were looking at different product markets. And the different markets that we looked at were perfect competition, monopoly, monopolistic competition, and oligopoly. Now, that's great. You know, those, the verbiage that we're using, all of that should be very, um, you should be very comfortable with by now. The product problem is, when we look at the product market, we have to look at things slightly differently. And by looking at them differently, we have to use some different vocabulary. All right, so first of all, the factor market is the market for inputs into production. Here's where the producer is now buying goods. Can you see how we go back to all our discussion of old McDonald, where she was trying to decide how much fertilizer to purchase? Well, here we go. Here's the market that she was in. Now, there's a slight complication when we move to looking at the um, factor market. And that is that under the factor market, we have what we call a derived demand. By a derived demand, we mean that the demand for the inputs into production <coughs> are derived from, or shall we say, are determined by not only the price of the input, but the demand for the output. For example, if you want to purchase labor and you're trying to decide how many workers to hire, that demand is going to be determined not only by the price you have to pay workers, but also the demand for your output. For example, if you were deciding how many water bottles to make and the price of labor were $15 an hour, you may not want to um, hire a lot of workers, even if the demand for your water bottles is high. 
$15 an hour may, at least in your opinion, be too high. But what happens if the price of workers, if the wage goes down to ridiculous, I know, 50 cents an hour, <clears throat> but your demand for your water bottles is high? All of a sudden, just because the demand doesn't change, but the price of labor changes, your desire to hire workers is going to change dramatically. Since we're now using a derived demand, we need to take into account not only what's happening in the factor market, but we also need to know, understand what's happening in the product market. So remember, the demand curve that we used in the product market is determined by the price of the good and the quantity of the good. But now with a derived demand, we need to take into account more information. So we cannot use a demand curve uh, in our analysis. We have to use something else. The something else we use is the value marginal product curve. The value marginal product is defined as the value of an additional output due to an additional input. Now, this is where we pull together both the factor market and the product market. The value marginal product can be determined by taking the price of the output and multiplying it by the marginal physical product of the output. Now remember, marginal physical product is the change in output over the change in input. So here's where we bring both of the markets together. Through the marginal physical product, we're looking at change in output over change in input. We also then multiply that by the price of the output. So we get that in terms of dollars. This is what we use in place of the demand curve. Okay, so where do we go from here? How do we decide how much of an input to purchase? Well, if you look at the left side here, we've got a good outline of a process by which we make that decision. The problem is we can't use marginal revenue anymore because that's looking at change of output. We can't use marginal cost anymore because that's looking at change of output also. So what we have to do is we need to get corresponding values for marginal revenue and marginal cost, but now looking at change of input. And so that's what we need to look at. Now, some of these terms may sound familiar. We have marginal revenue product. That is calculated by finding the change in revenue divided by the change in input. So if we hire one more worker, what is that worker going to make us? We also look at something called marginal factor cost. And as you can guess, Marginal factor cost is simply the change in total cost divided by the change in output. So marginal revenue would be, marginal revenue product, excuse me, would be the change in revenue due to a change in input. I hire one more worker, what does that worker make me? And I compare that to my marginal factor cost, which is the change in total cost divided by the change of input. So if I hire one more worker, what is that additional worker going to cost me? So can you guess where profit maximization is going to occur? Well, yeah, it occurs where the marginal revenue product equals marginal factor cost. Now, <clears throat> the other little switch here is when we start drawing the graphs, we're going to look at not the demand curve, but the supply curve. All right, <clears throat> we're going to get to that in a moment. Don't freak out yet. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the other issue that we have here is that 
we can't talk about monopoly, perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, because by their nature, those terms mean the product market. It would be difficult for us to <clears throat> talk about or come up with a word that changes in order to indicate we're talking about the factor market. Of those four, there's only one that we really talk about in terms of the factor market, and that's something called monopsony. Monopsony is when you have one buyer of a product. All right, so for example, I'm hoping, I'm praying that it that the US government is a monopsony when it comes to buying nuclear weapons in the United States. I'm hoping the US government is the only one buying those because I really don't want to see what's going to happen if other people buy them. Okay? We don't have corresponding names for perfect competition, monopolistic competition or oligopoly. So when we're looking at market structures and how the market works, instead we look at the idea of a price taker and a price setter. A price taker is defined as a firm that has no market power and it must take the market price. So looking back at our product market, a price taker would be perfect competition. Right? The opposite of a price taker is a price setter. A price setter is a firm that has market power and can set the market price. Now, you remember that monopolies, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, Individual firms in these market structures are price setters. They can set that market price. All right, so take a minute, put me on pause, go back and look at these and kind of digest the difference between the factor market and the product market. All right, uh, <clears throat> before you do that, let's go to look at just a couple of things that I wanted to point out to you before we move to the graphs. The factor market, whether you're a price setter or price taker, is going to determine the shape of the supply curve and the marginal factor cost curves. All right? The product market, whether you're a price setter or a price taker, will determine the shapes of the value marginal product and marginal revenue product curves. Okay, so let all of this stuff sink into your minds. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch to f the factor market lecture two to look at what the graphs for these are going to look like. So take a few minutes, digest this information, and then go into the factor market lecture two, and we'll proceed from there. See you soon.